To find the present value of a single amount to be received in the future, we will use this formula here, which says that present value equals the future value divided by one plus r raised to the t, where r is the interest rate expressed as a decimal and t is time. In Excel, to get the exponent, we're going to use the caret symbol, which on most keyboards is Shift-6. So we have some examples over here. The first one is asking to find the present value of $500 received five years from now using a 6% discount rate. According to our formula, it is equal to the future value, 500, divided by 1 plus the interest rate, 6% expressed as a decimal is 0.06. Close parentheses, the caret, shift 6, which means raised to the, and t, which is 5, because it is 5 years from now. When we hit enter, it gives us our answer. $500 received 5 years from now will have a present value of 373.63. In our second example, $2,000 received 10 years from now using an 8% discount rate. Same procedure equals the future value 2,000 divided by 1 plus the interest rate 8% expressed as a decimal 0.08, close parentheses, raised to the 10 because it is 10 years from now. Answer 926.39. In the third example, we have $100 received one year from now using a 4% discount rate. Our formula equals the future value 100 divided by 1 plus the interest rate 4% or 0.04 raised to the 1 because it is one year from now. The reason I wanted to do this example is just to show that when it is one year from now, you actually do not need the exponent at all. However, it doesn't change anything if you do have it. 96.15 is the value of $100 received one year from now if the discount rate is 4%. The last example here, $200 received two years from now using a 4% discount rate equals the future value 200 divided by 1 plus 4% 0.04 raised to the 2 for two years from now, 184.91. The one other thing I wanted to point out is that if you have a problem where, for example, you are going to receive $100 one year from now and $200 two years from now using a 4% discount rate. You can do the two problems separately like we have here, and then you would add up the results to figure out the present value of that investment.